Hello, and welcome to episode 56 of Knit Sense. My name is Jan, and you can find me as Jan Ellen RN on Ravelry and on Instagram. We do also have a Knit Sense Facebook page, which I don't think anybody's ever written on, but I encourage you to go over there and let's start some conversation. I also do have a forum on Ravelry called the Knit Sense Podcast. Um, that also is really lacking in action, so <laughs> feel free to go over there and post uh, what you think? You know, let's get some knit along started, some conversation started. That would be really great. I had mentioned in, I don't know if it was the last podcast or podcast before, that I would love to do a knit along. Um, I'm not sure what anybody would be interested in doing if you just want to do a finish a whip. Um, knit along, you know, that would be great. Um, Rhinebeck is coming. Um, I would say maybe, you know, today is actually August 1st. It is Thursday, August 1st, I think. So it would be a perfect time to cast on a Rhinebeck sweater and have it done by, say, the end of August. Um, whips would be, um, more than welcome. I know that I have a whip on the needles that, well, we don't even want to go there because it got started and left and started and left. But at any rate, if that's something, I think my cat just jumped up, yeah, to be in the picture. Okay. Um, if that's something that you're interested in doing, um, please either comment in the comment section below, leave a comment on the forum, let me know. I can certainly uh, add an incentive by putting in a prize or two, maybe one for progress photos and one for finished objects. So let me know if that's something that you would be interested in doing. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, um, I, that would be great. I'd really appreciate it if you did. I can't even imagine what that cat's busting over in the sink, but we didn't get too far into this before the trouble is starting. I already had a whole bout where I had to restart because it was a rabbit in the backyard that the dogs were just going crazy over. Um, the rabbit's gone, now the cat's starting in. Okay, anyway, um, if you haven't subscribed, um, hit that subscribe button uh, just below. And if you ring that notification bell or click on that notification bell, you will be notified every time I upload a new episode. So if you haven't done that already, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed and join us here at Shea Knit Sense. So I'm keeping this rolling. I have to tell you, I'm, I'm like this right now because I had, every, well, all right, let's be honest. My husband had everything set up. And I haven't budged it. I have not moved anything since I started re-recording with the other camera and this light, whatever he's got business he's got set up here. And today he, or he's been away, he needed his monitor back and I got, he ordered me another one, it came in and I had to hook it up. And let's just say I'm already so far out of my technological comfort zone that it's insane. I think this just literally pushed me over the edge and it's working. The battery's probably gonna be dead before I'm finished, but like I said, this shouldn't be a long one because I don't have a whole lot of progress. It's only been a week. Um, so I don't have all that much to show you and every time I say that somehow or another this ends up being like the longest podcast on the planet But I don't think so this time it, He's just walking away back there. He is just walking around back there part of the reason because I just keep talking So I'm gonna cut the chitter chatter and <laughs> Just move along. I completely forgot what I was saying, but at any rate this technology thing setting up this monitor pushed me over the edge. So I'm literally sitting here and I'm trying to deep breaths and calm myself down. Anyway, this episode will contain some knitting. I have three works in progress that I have been 
kind of working on and I will explain the kind of in a moment. I do have some spinning. I have made some progress on my new e-spinner which I did review in the last podcast that I put up. Um, so I will show you the progress that I've made on that. Not much again. I have very little stash enhancement, very little. I think I'm still recovering from the, I wasn't gonna buy yarn when I went to SSK <laughs> guilt. So we have that and no finished objects, but I do have a fragrance to review. I will timestamp when we get into the scents portion of Knit Sense. Um, because I know not everybody is interested in fragrance. It's not your your thing or whatever Just not interested in it. That's okay. So I will put a time stamp below when we get to that But I do want to say that this particular fragrance that I'm going to review this week is a very unusual one It's outside of my box. I actually did get a sample I tried it for a while and then I did decide to jump in and get it um, but it's a very unusual niche fragrance, which I will talk about later on. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned and we will get to that. So let's, how is everybody doing? I hope you're all okay and I hope everybody survived that horrendous heat wave. I, I don't know if it's been everywhere. I'm pretty sure it's been widespread all over the country, but here it has been close to 100 day after day after day. My party pony's getting a lot of work out because I don't even dare take my hair down. And my daughter said this is just barely high enough to be considered a party pony. Can you believe this? Do you believe this? I'm, I'm worried about a party pony. Who the hell cares? It's cool. I don't care. I don't care where it lands on my head. Anyway, we did have some storms roll through here last night, which I have to say was nothing compared to the ones we had last week, which knocked out my internet, knocked out my cable, a lot of people lost power. We just had a lot of lightning, some thunder, barely any rain. Um, even my chicken dog didn't even, <laughs> didn't even really phase him too much. So that's where we're at. It is a brand new month and I hope it's a good one for everybody. So let's just dive in with the knitting. Oh, I do want to say, I have not only tried this new setup, which we're going to stick with if I can put it back, because I can't leave it here for much longer. Like I said, I haven't touched it since my husband set this all up like a week or so ago, and I kind of do need my kitchen table back at some point. So I am going to have to learn how to close it up and put it back, which would be a very interesting uh, study in technology and believe it or not yeah my first degree is in broadcasting I don't even want to tell you how many years ago I got that degree but suffice it to say that not one piece of this equipment was invented back then <laughs> so it's all for naught anyway let's get into the knitting I but what I was saying before again before I got sidetracked which is nothing unusual was that I also have downloaded and am using a new software and so far it seems to be working very well I have not gotten too in depth with it so that's why last week um, and I think the week before also I didn't put titles up um, I know it's not a big deal um, I have gotten the basics of getting the stuff on there and getting the cuts out and whatever. Can you believe, I could not believe until I've been editing the last two podcasts, how many times I say the word, um, I must've cut out 25 ums and there were plenty still left in there. I'm thinking maybe we should start like a little drinking game, shot of whatever, whatever, a shot of Diet Coke shot of vodka, a little shot of tequila every time I say the word um, because let me tell you, I could only edit out just so many ums before it got to the point where um, I'm sick of ums. <laughs> so anyway, the point is I did find a new software that does seem to be working well for me, but I'm still learning. So if you see things kind of popping up in funny spots or little edits going wrong, that's why, but we're working with it and it seems to be working fine. So now that I've blathered on, why don't we jump on into the knitting? So the one thing that has gotten the most love this week, and I say the most loosely, because I have 
developed, and I think I mentioned it in a previous podcast. Here we go. Things are going to go flying, but um, I'm not sure. But I have developed trigger finger, trigger finger, which here's a clue. <laughs> here's a clue. Does bring me to this week's fragrance. Okay. All right. Trigger finger, this week's fragrance. There's a connection. Just saying. So I was actually pretty limited in the amount of knitting and particularly spinning that I was able to do because it was particularly painful. It did not stop me. Okay. So what I have been working on the most, and I left the pattern and the name of the pattern upstairs. I believe it is called Tilly. Let's let it go at that. We're going to say it's Tilly. And if it's not, I'll put the right name, hopefully here with a graphic. Uh, this I, um, see, here we go again with the ums. We're not saying, um, no more ums. This is a pattern that I saw in House of Yarn when I was in Nashville, and I saw it on the mannequin, and I loved it. So I cast this on while I was down there, and I managed to get through the lace part, and it is a very simple kind of t-shirt Ooh, that's showing up pretty well. Anyway, this week I did get past, I had gotten past the lace the last time and I think I was still working on the last of the increase rows. There are some short rows in the back so you can see that the back comes up a little bit higher than the front. I like that. I actually had knit a sweater a year or two ago that didn't have that and I have to say, do you ever wear a sweater where something's just funny? You can't put your finger on it, it fits, it, it, it's not that, but something's just kind of funny about it, you're constantly pulling at it. I've decided that's what's wrong with that sweater because that sweater had no short rows in the back and I would knit it again in a heartbeat. I can't remember off the top of my head what sweater it was, but I would knit it again Next time, I would put some short rows in the back. So anyway, there's the short row shaping in the back. And here is just a little bit of lace patterning. And you can see I did get past the sleeves, putting the sleeves on a holder. And I am now coming down, and I have to do 8 inches from the bottom of the sleeve. So that's where I'm at. See, am I holding this upside down? Yeah, probably. So I'm going to say that's maybe three inches I have done. So I have another good five inches to go before I'm not sure. Like I said, I don't have the pattern with me, but I'm not sure if you do a little bit of shaping at the bottom, but I think it's just like a boxy tee. So this was a super simple, really, I, I'm just love it. I love the way this looks. I might have to knit another one. If my fingers hadn't hurt so bad, it probably would be finished at this point and I'd probably be on another one. But I did make progress on this, so I was kind of pleased with that. I am knitting this out of, I'm going to just hold it up because Silkiel, Navia Silkiel. Let's see if I can focus on that. to focus. There we go. I think that's focused. Again, it's a new monitor, so I can't really... Yeah, there we go. Okay. And this is the... Yeah, Navial... Navia Sil Silkiel. I don't know. I never heard of it before. But it is 25% silk, 75% wool, and it's really been a pleasure to work with. It's not splitty. It does the only problem I've had, honestly, is making the join. I like to make some kind of a join in my yarns. I don't like to just leave it and then weave it in later. We all know I have an incredible love for weaving in ends. So um I'm gonna actually there was another um. I'm gonna have to edit that um out. I'm trying to keep track now. <laughs> is that not sick? Because it's really, it's a terrible habit. So when I saw this in the, in the store, it just felt so soft. It's not splitty. As I was saying, I don't like 
to we, we know I don't like to weave in my ends so I like to do a join and my favorite join is is spit splicing that's that's my favorite I actually haven't tried it with this yet and being 75% wool it might work I haven't tried it I'm a little afraid with the silk 25% maybe just too much to try spit spit splicing it I also tried the magic knot which is my second favorite join and that did not work at all this just pulled right as soon as you pull that knot this just came right apart but this is very easy it's very loosely plied and I'm gonna try again to see if I can focus on that and you can you can see it's it's loosely plied and it doesn't specify what kind of wool it is or how it's spun I I'm gonna go it's just very loosely plied I don't know how the singles were spun if I had to take a stab at it with the halo and the loftiness I would guess this is probably woolen spun I'm just going on a hunch and the way that this just breaks I think the silk is what adds the strength to it so that when I pull on it because sometimes if you pull on a like a Brooklyn tweed shelter yarn and you pull on both ends like this you're gonna end up pulling it apart because it's well and spun and it's kind of fragile but once you knit it up it, it, it's it's great and it almost felts a little bit which is what it's supposed to do when you wash it so the garment actually does have some durability uh, so like I said this I believe the silk is what's holding it together because when I do do the magic knot and I pull pff, comes right apart so what I've been doing on this is a braided join and if you're not familiar with that there are some uh, tutorials on it on YouTube if anyone is interested in learning how to do it it's very similar to a Russian join I think it holds better particularly with this kind of yarn that if you pull on it it's not so happy about it and because it's so loosely plied I'm not sure a Russian join would really hold well on this so I've been doing a braided join on it that's been working really well that's really the only and I don't want to say issue because it's not really an issue with the yarn the proper thing to do would be to just leave the ends and weave them in but we all know that's 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 my last resort and I do mean last resort so that is my Tilly sweater so that's gotten some love and it is living in my Whimsy Stitches Llama tote bag that I did get and I had showed this in my SSK haul. But in case you hadn't watched that video, this is from Whimsy Stitches and it is his large tote and it is large. I actually had to take this out of one of my naughty bags. <laughs> it has it had a naughty saying on it only because it outgrew the size of the bag. So now it is in my Whimsy Stitches llama bag. Okay, number two. I don't know if I had shown this. I actually cast this on before I went down to SSK. I knit the polka sweater, and I know I had mentioned it because it was squeaky chair. I know. That's the next thing we'll have to work on. I had cast this on before I went down to SSK, and I know I mentioned this sweater because... I did bring the one I have already knit down to SSK to put it into the try it on room. I love the sweater. It's a very easy style to wear. It's called Polka. It is by Laura Nelkin. It's done with her Novus construction, which means that it is knit from side to side. So you knit your sleeves, you cast on stitches, and I'm going to show you because I'm at that point now where I just cast on for the front and the back. You knit across you knit across the other side and then you join the pieces with panels which means no seaming no seaming my kind of sweater so here I am knitting it out of the yarn you know and I'm looking at it in the monitor and when I looked at it after I went to edit it I, what I'm seeing is very hot colors but it didn't seem to show up that badly so I'm hoping that you're getting an accurate picture. I'm just looking to see what exactly the color is, but I don't have, let's see if we can take this out. It is Jill Draper Make Stuff. 
I think I mentioned, I actually think I did mention this before because I got this, it's Jill Draper Make Stuff Kingston. She does a lot of uh, breed specific yarns and this one is Targi. It's 100% Targi and the colorway is Flatbush Avenue, which if any of you are familiar, that is a very large street in Brooklyn. So this is the colorway and again, I'm hoping it doesn't show up that bright when I go to to edit this because it is actually really mm, how do I describe this because it's got so many colors in it it's sort of a golden brown it's got flecks of yellow flecks of red flecks of gold I actually see flecks of green it's it's a beautiful beautiful color and this particular yarn is what Laura recommends for the polka but the only thing she does say you can certainly use any other yarn the concern with the polka is you don't want a yarn with drape you want a yarn that's a little more has a little more stiffness a little more body to it because otherwise the pockets will get saggy and as i've already said before we don't want saggy pockets so here's what i've done uh, like I said, I cast this on to take this down and worked so hard on it during SSK. Went to House of Yarn, saw the other sweater, cast it on, and that was the end of this one. But this will likely be one of my Rhinebeck sweaters. My other polka was last year's Rhinebeck sweater. So this is the sleeve. This is where you start. And you can see down here. And I will be working up in this direction. This particular sweater has some dolman shaping to it. So, and Laura does give instructions if you're not fond of that kind of shaping, you can leave it out. After I finish the sleeve, I will then provisionally cast on stitches for the front and for the back on either side of the sleeve and work them all at the same time. The pocket is worked into the front so it's not added on it's actually worked as part of the garment so while this didn't get much love I don't recall if I had shown this before and since this is actually going to be one of the next things I work on I thought I would show it now I am using for this my artisan lake let's see my artisan lake maple circular size five circular needles and actually let me show you this pair because they're inside I do have them in here let's see if we can focus on that let's see there we go and what's unusual about these I've tried the cubics the four-sided needles I didn't find them to be ergonomically helpful, correct, or anything. They didn't, and in fact, they changed my gauge. I didn't care for them. I think it was this past year or last year at Rhinebeck, I'm not sure. Somebody had recommended to me to try these, that they were totally, totally different from the Cubics because these are hexagonal. So they do resemble a round needle more because of the number of sides to them. They're very pointy. They seem to be very sturdy. And so far, at the point on them for a wooden needle is really amazing. I have to say I've been very, very pleased with these needles. The cord swivels on them. They come in different woods. I got mine both. I only have two pairs. They are pricey. I want to say, let me see if the price is on there. I don't want to, I don't want to wing it, but I'm going to say they were somewhere in the neighborhood of like $35, 30, 35, 40, somewhere in there for one fixed circular, which to me, I think is, is pricey for fixed circulars. They come in walnut, cherry, and maple. And it doesn't say on the back here, but 
I can tell you from speaking to the manufacturer that one is sturdier, one is a little slicker, one is a little less slippery. So there is a method to choosing the wood. Do I think it makes a huge difference? I don't think so. I went with the maple because I think that one was the most sturdy and I've been known to sit on my needles. Okay, that's, that's how I picked that. So I was kind of hoping maybe it wouldn't bust on me. So that's another whip. And the last one that I have, I've picked up. I picked back up again. And this is a knit along that's going on by Casa Pinka. It's called Perfect Blend. I know that a lot of local yarn, sh yarn shops have been participating in this, as have a number of indie dyers. I want to say that the first one to jump in with kits was Miss Babs, but I could totally be making that up. But I do believe that Miss Babs made a kit or a number of kits of different colors. The pattern calls for 12 mini skeins in either 80 yards or 100 yards to make the smaller size shawl or the larger size shawl. According to the pattern and according to some of the pre-information that was given out from the pattern, there is not a huge difference in size between the two. I went to my local yarn store. They had some kits that were done by Emma's Yarn. And I actually have worked with Emma's Yarn before. I loved her colors. They had a kind of a neutral set. I don't want to, and I'm going to show you all the colors this time. I think, I believe I have shown this before, but I don't think I had shown all the colors. Now, I know some people are working on this, so I am going to put a spoiler alert here. However, having said that, I believe Clue 3 is, at least Clue 3 is out. I'm not sure if Clue 4 came out yet, but I know that we're at least up to Clue 3. I haven't finished Clue 1, <laughs> so if you're past Clue 1, I have nothing to spoil for you. If you're just starting and you haven't seen it yet, um, I'm going to post that this is a spoiler alert, but and we'll do the jazz hands when it's done, but again, I'm not done with Clue 1, and I don't think this is going to spoil anything for anybody, but here we go. I am using 12 colors. I'm just trying to turn off the sound on this silly thing. I don't know how to do it. Let it just make it sense. I am using 12 colors from Emma's Yarn. So let me pull those out first. And this one is still connected, so we'll leave that one. I can read you the color names that I have, but I'm not sure which one at this point is which. So I'm going to hold up. That is the first six. These I think I've already used, and the six that I have out are the remaining six in the rest of Clue 1. So that's the first six, and here are the second six that I'm working with now. So you can see they're neutral, but there are pops. There's this pop of this golden yellow down here. There's a pop of green in that one. There's, I wouldn't say a pop, but there's navy. And there's actually another golden color in here too, which is, I'm gonna hold it up and show you. They're, they're kind of similar. Let's see if that will help it focus any. Somehow if I blot my face out, it helps it to focus. Anyway, so those are the 12 colors that I'm using for the Casa Pinka Perfect Blend Mystery Knit Along. Here we go. Get ready. Here's my whole progress. Like I said, it's really not giving away all that much. That's, that's what I've done. Now I have made a little progress since the last time. I'm not sure how far along I was, but this is where I'm at now. And this is kind of a little repetitious, uh, how do I say it? It's, it's, each one of these is 
a little bit different than the next one, but then you go back to the original. Does that make sense? Like there's a garter one, there's a stockinette one, and then you go back to a garter one. There's a couple of slip stitches in there if you can see it. So, so far it's got some pretty textures, but I have to say I really love the colors. I love the way these colors are coming out. I think this is going to be beautiful. I've looked online because um, I, I have to look ahead. I have to see what I'm getting myself into, otherwise I'm going to get in over my head. We've learned. So I've seen the ones that people have kept up with the clues on and they really are beautiful. There are some very interesting stitches in there. I'm not sure why, but this bag is soaking wet. Okay. Um, so I'm really interested to see and to move ahead and to get into some of the more um, advanced techniques, to get into some of the more interesting cables. I think there are some, I believe there's an Indian cross stitch in there. So that's, that's been my knitting. And I have to say part of the reason why, and I actually wasn't even going to make an episode, but I don't want to, nope, we're going to keep on going. And this is off on a tangent. It's been very difficult for me to knit and particularly to spin because I have developed a trigger finger and it's painful my goodness does it hurt and I've been going ahead and knitting and spinning anyway but I do have an appointment tomorrow which is going to probably just take off into its own life form because I'm sure he's going to want to do some sort of injection and I'm sure I'm not going to get that so <laughs> so that's that's the explanation why I really haven't made any more or much more progress than I have because it's it's been kind of painful to knit but at any rate moving along we did get some spinning progress I'm still working on what I had shown and what I was demonstrating on the Daedalus wheel and I don't know if I had mentioned but the fiber that I'm using is from Into the World it is from the Lux Club from October of 2014 so I went some deep stash diving for this it's called Butterfly Effect that's the fiber now this is this I split the braid in half and then I'm going to split this braid, what's left of the second half, either in two or three, probably two. I think I'm going to try to keep it simple and do a, a very basic fractal spin on it. This is 801010, so it's superwash merino, cashmere, and nylon. This, as I said, is the second braid. I didn't bring down what was left of the first one. I just happened to take this off the wheel, but I did do... A fair make a fair amount of progress on this I'm actually kind of pleased with myself so that's how much I've gotten done you know now all of a sudden it's like I have this urge to go back to my default and Navajo ply this which is what I've pretty much done with all of my into the world braids is I've spun them up and then chain plied them so that the colors kept intact but I really want to see and I've seen so many people doing yarns that have barber pulling in it and if you look there are so many yarns now that feature barber pulling spin cycle being one of them so if I had done all of that fractal spinning I wouldn't have had to go out and get all of those yarns for all of those shift cowls and night shifts that Andrea Mary is coming out with. So that's kind of what I'm thinking with this is to try and spin a couple of different colors that are contrasting. Uh, and I have plenty of, oh, do I have fiber. So now that I've gotten my spinning mojo starting to come back, if my thumbs would feel better, I think it would come back with a vengeance. But now that I've gotten going again on spinning, I would love to come look out some other contrasting colors and maybe knit them into a, mm, I think it's the night shift cowl. It's the one that 
is almost like a bandana, but it goes around your neck, but then it comes to a point, so it's kind of like a cross between a cowl and a shawl, and I think that's the one called Night Shift, and I actually do have one on the needles. It's been sitting with spin cycle yarns, and that's kind of what gave me the idea that if I did do some fractal spinning or got some barber pulling going, I could save myself a whole lot of money using what I already have. So that's the extent of my knitting and my spinning. I have very little stash enhancement. Like I said, I'm still trying to reconcile the I'm not buying any yarn. However, I did purchase, Laura Nelkin got back into her shop and I, I last time I checked, there were still some available. I know I had shown as a finished object in my last podcast, the Kairos bracelet. And I really, really enjoyed that bracelet so much that when she got them in stock, she got them back in different colors. So I, I needed one in another color. So I bought them. I bought another one in, let me see if the color is listed here. This actually, believe it or not, is using Emma's Yarn Practically Perfect Sock. I apologize for the clicking and whatever. They're doing laundry or something in the background there. And if I didn't start recording now, it wasn't going to happen. So anyway, this is Kairos. This is the beads that came with this colorway. I just have to see if I can find the colorway. There weren't too many. I think there were four colors available on the website. Um, if I find it and if I'm able to get a graphic up, I will put the colorway here. Otherwise, I will link it in the down bar below. But these are the beads and the color. The other one I had was this one that was shown on here. That was the original one that came with the Laura Nelkin kit. So that's a lighter one with more multicolors. This one is definitely more in the... Mm, blue teal with a little pop of gold so they're definitely two different colors and the kits do come she was able to get a few more of these clasps from the maker of these leather clasps i am obsessed with these i wish she would sell them separately or be able to get enough of them to sell them separately but they the kit that you purchase will come with the clasp for the bracelet as well as the yarn and the beads and i had said when i showed it i did check my ravelry page i thought i went a size up i did make the small i went up in needle size by a quarter of a millimeter and i was extremely happy with that fit and i have an extremely tiny wrist i think it measures five and a half and according to the pattern, I should do the small on the suggested size needle. I didn't have it. I didn't want it tight, partly because I don't want anything tight on my wrist, especially wool in the heat. And I, I did make another one of her bracelets that I did make in the small following the size. And it was, it just fit. This one, again, I made in the small. I did show it on a previous podcast how it fit my wrist. It doesn't move up and down much, but it isn't tight on it. So if you have a five and a half, six inch wrist, I would say go up a quarter of a needle size and you should be fine with this kit. Um, but otherwise, just follow her directions. She gives you, I think, three different sizes. I think there's a small, a medium, and a large according to your wrist size. So that was one enabling. The second one, I'm not going to read it out loud because I don't want to get a naughty, a naughty strike from, <laughs> from YouTube. But I got this beautiful bag. I actually pre-ordered it. I had spoken to Vicki and I did show the last bag that I had gotten from her at House of Yarn. When I realized that it was actually Vicki with no E that makes the bag, uh, her brand is called Black Cat Bags. I saw this fabric, asked her if she had any more. She did. As soon as I got home, I asked her if she could make me one. She did, and it came. So I'm just going to hold it up and say, I love it muchly. 
That's all I'm going to say about it. Not going to read it. Not going to say it. Her bags are, first of all, Vicky is a sweetheart to deal with. An absolute sweetheart to deal with. If you don't follow her on Instagram, you should. It is Vicky, V-I-C-K-I, Vicky with no E. That's her name on Instagram. She very often shows the bags that she's made that she is going to have for sale. If you see a fabric that you like, uh, I would suggest DMing her, seeing if you can pre-order it. That seems to be the best way to get in touch with her. She is extremely quick in responding. Very, very wonderful to deal with. She's a sweetheart. I love that she puts, this one has a little sleeping kitty. Let's see if we can, if this will focus in on that. Anyway. She has really cute zipper pulls on there. Put it in front of my, let's see. You gotta tell me if it's focusing, I can't tell. Anyway, her bags say, there's a tag on it, says black cat bags, and if you flip it over, it says made in Tennessee by Vicky with no E, which I had no idea until she told me. So I think that her name is spelled out there. I think you can see that. And that, it's all my enabling. So that is all of the knitting out of the way. So that brings us to this week's scents. So I will put a timestamp if you are not into scents, if you're not interested. Um, but again, like I said, this is an unusual one. So stay tuned if you want to hear about it. Otherwise, what I would like to say, again, I encourage, I would love to do a knit along. I really would. It, it doesn't have to be a sweater. Whatever you guys would like to do, I will dig up or I will go out to one of my local yarn stores and find something really, really good for an incentive. So if that's something you're interested in, either post below. Better yet, go on Ravelry, go to the Knit Sense podcast put it on the forum there. You can go onto my Facebook page, which is Knit Sense, and that also, the page is linked below so that you get to help you find it. But in any place here, Facebook, Ravelry, let me know if you're interested and we can start a knit along. So having said that, let's pop into the scents. And this week's scents, and I'm gonna pull it up because this was really an unusual one. The name of the fragrance, House. Okay, the manufacturer, and it is in, considered a niche brand, meaning it's not a designer fragrance. A designer fragrance being like the Marc Jacobs, the Christian Dior, uh, what else? All of those fragrances that you find in the stores that are at the counters, that you find in Ulta, those names are more designer fragrances. Niche fragrances are a little bit harder to find, although they do sell this one in Sephora, but it's a small, they're smaller brands. They're smaller brands. They don't sell like uh, accessories or other things. They're essentially just fragrance houses. And this fragrance house is called Juliet Has a Gun. And the name of this particular fragrance is not a perfume. So let's see if we can get that focused in on there. Okay. So at first when I saw the bottle, I thought it was, oh, a little plastic bottle until I picked it up and immediately was scared to bits to drop this because this is heavy. I don't know if it's glass to me, it feels kind of like almost ceramic, which makes it even more dangerous in my hands. So we're gonna set it down. But that's the name of it. And I'm, you know, when you hear Juliet, you right away go to G Romeo and Juliet. And I wanted to know what, what was the connection here? And it turns out that there actually is a connection. So let me read to you from their website. This is the Juliet Has a Gun website. And it says, from New York City to Paris, Moscow, or Sydney, Juliet intrigues the world, meaning Juliet from Romeo and Juliet. Armed with her perfume, this Shakespearean heroine goes wild. Life is too short and pleasures too many, says Juliet. The gun, which is a metaphor for the perfume, 
weapon of seduction, or simple accessory of bluff, essentially symbolizes the liberation of women towards men, and sometimes with a taste for revenge. But the concept is also influenced by Romanticism, a modern version where reinventing couple and femininity is a constant quest. Launched in 2006, our philosophy is to approach perfumery as an art and to be present only through a limited dis distribution, such as concept stores, department stores, or specialized perfumeries. Just a note, the creator of this fragrance house, Juliet Has a Gun, is Romano Ricci. Now, if the name, if, if you're my age, the name Ricci is probably ringing a bell, as in Nina Ricci. And his grandfather, Robert Romano, is the nose behind L'Air du Temps, which was a very, very popular fragrance from the house of Nina Ricci. Nina being his great-grandmother. He named the house after his mother, if that makes sense here. So the what I'm trying to get across to you <laughs> is that um, Romano Ricci comes from a family of perfumers. So this is not anything that's new for him. So let me explain what makes this. I'm going to go back now to Fragrantica and I'm going to explain to you why this is very unusual fragrance. Most fragrances, I'm sure we all know, they have, they're comprised of many different elements. You have your base notes, you have your middle notes, and you have your top notes. Your top notes being what you smell when you originally spray your fragrance. You can, whatever the top note is, be it vanilla, be it uh, woods, whatever, whatever it is. That usually wears off within anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes, and then you're into your middle notes. And then maybe after about an hour or so, then you're down to your base notes. And that's one thing that I really should stop and recommend right now to say, if you're just getting into fragrance, or if you've ever had the experience that you've sprayed something on and you absolutely loved it in the store and you bought it and you brought it home and you sprayed it the next day and after a while you just were like, what in the world is this? That's why. When you try any fragrance, you should wear it for at least a full day before you make a decision because very often, very, very often, what you initially spray on yourself, particularly if you're spraying it on one of those little spray tester things in the store and you smell it, it's nothing like what it's gonna smell on you and it's nothing like what it's gonna spread, uh, smell like in a couple of hours. And it shouldn't be. Any good fragrance should change along the way if that's how the fragrance was designed which brings me to this particular fragrance. This particular fragrance is not designed that way. There is no top note, there is no middle note, there is no base note. There is only one note in this, and it's Ambroxan. That's the only thing contained in this bottle, is the chemical formula of Ambroxan. And I'm gonna read to you from here that Juliet has a gun, not a perfume, and that's why it's named not a perfume. It's not made like a normal average perfume would be made with your base notes, middle notes, and top notes. This is one note, period. So it is called C16H28O, if you're a chemist and you're interested. But otherwise, that's the formula for Ambroxan. It's the only key ingredient in this non-perfume. Ambrox was born in the 1950s in something I can't pronounce as a substitute for gray amber, which was very expensive, but very commonly used. Now, if you're not familiar, over the past few years, and this is fairly recent, a lot of laws have been changed 
to that have affected the perfume industry and a lot of ingredients true natural ingredients that were once used very widely in fragrances are no longer legally allowed to be used so labs have had to come up with synthetic versions of these fragrances now synthetics have been used for a very long time and actually the very first synthetic fragrance may surprise you but it's actually Chanel number no. five that was the first synthetic perfume made so now I believe it also does have some natural oils and natural ingredients in it but it was made with a, a lot of synthetics and just in case just as a side note the way it got numbered with number five was that Coco Chanel was given a, an array of samples and she picked her favorite number which was number five and that's the story of how it got named Chanel number five okay I just went off on a tangent has nothing to do with the Juliet has a gun just thought I put that out there while it was still stuck in my head anyway Ambrox is typically used as one of the base notes of compositions while it has a leading role in this non-perfume it's a provocative declaration which does not follow the rules of modern perfumery not a perfume is based on contradictions since its composition is created of molecules and is the only fragrance without allergens so if you have any issues with allergies if perfumes make you sneeze if they're overwhelming if you can't work and if you can't wear fragrance in an environment where there there are issues with allergies hospitals doctors offices that kind of thing you may be able to get away with wearing this particular fragrance now having said all of that I mean there's a whole thing here with you know whatever the let me just explain the main accords of this it like I said it does attempt to mimic amber and it's a musky fragrance so having said all of that there are another there's another there, there's a house that's very similar that creates more of these this actually is the only single note fragrance that I know of from Juliet has a gun not a perfume there's another company called Essential Molecule, which also does single note molecule fragrances. I know there's Essential Molecule 01, Molecule 02. I don't know how far they take it. I haven't tried those. What a lot of people do with those is layer them. This particular fragrance, I think, depends on your body chemistry. On some people, they're gonna love it. It's going to have that musky, woody fragrance. It is not a screaming fragrance. It is not going to scream across the room. This is a very close scent. Um, what do you, I would call it a soft, a soft fragrance. I spray it on myself and yeah, I still smell it on myself the next morning, but other people don't, you know, are like, Sometimes they get a whiff of it, and I think that's the whole beauty of this fragrance. It's not a constant. I spray it on myself, and I smell it, and then it sort of fades away, and then all of a sudden I'll get another whiff of it, and on me, it is a woody, musky, clean, clean fragrance. I have read a lot of reviews on this fragrance and this seems to be very dependent on body chemistry on some people and I have to say I'm not even gonna repeat what some people have said this has smelled like in my experience it hasn't even come close because if it did I wouldn't have even tried spraying it on myself so I think this is really dependent on your body chemistry so this to me is not a safe line by if you like there are a lot of people that whose fragrance tastes I really strongly identify with and if I see the notes in a fragrance they recommend it they tell me what it what it resembles what it smells like to them 
I might go out and just buy it and give it a try blindly. I think I only had one miss on that. This is not a safe blind buy. You need to try this before you buy it. I know you can get a sample at Sephora. I'm not sure what department stores sell this brand because again, like I said, it's a niche brand. I want to say Nordstrom. I'm not 100% sure, but you can certainly look it up online. Um, and whatever department stores carry it will come up. I would absolutely have a sample made up of it and I would try it for a day or two to see how well you like it. But here's the other thing that I highly recommend with this fragrance. Because it is one note, and because it is a very common note in other fragrances, this is fabulous for making whatever fragrance you wear last longer. Project more if that's what you want to get out of your fragrance. This is a great fragrance base. Now, it is pricey, I'm not gonna lie, but to me, because it does double duty on a hot day when I don't really wanna be smelling like who knows, you know, it's like you can't even take the heat, you don't wanna take a deep breath and be like, Ugh. you know, it's bad enough, it's the humidity sucking the life out of you. This is perfect. It's perfect for me. It may not be for you, which is why I would say, absolutely go out get a sample and give this one a try but this layering i have it layered today with a fragrance that i love and i'll probably review it in the next podcast so you'll have to wait and see what it is but it's one that doesn't tend to have great longevity and it doesn't also project very well and i'm finding that this is the first time i've actually layered it with this and it has not changed the scent but all of a sudden I can really smell it. I smell it more. I smell it. It it really just enhanced the fragrance. So I'm not going to say I highly recommend going out and buying this. I highly recommend going out and getting a sample of this and giving it a good chance. This is not going to be the same as the ones that you spray and it's going to smell different throughout the day. It isn't. It will, you know, it, there is alcohol in it, so you gotta give that a chance to kind of dry off. But once you get the scent, once you see what it's gonna, this fragrance is gonna be like on you, it isn't gonna change. There is that one note. So I really would love to hear your feedback on it if you've tried it in the past, if you go out and you get a sample of it and you give it a try, I really would love to hear your reactions about it because I actually just bought a backup bottle. They do have it available on fragrancex.net. I think it's fragrancex.net, whatever it is, I will link it below. I have purchased from them. I believe I've mentioned this before many, many times. They are a local company, but you can't go in. They, I have to have it shipped. The fragrances are authentic. I've checked the bar, the, the scan code or whatever. Never had a problem. The delivery is amazingly fast. Customer service is fabulous. I just got the smaller bottle at, I want to say it wasn't half off, but it wasn't much more than 50% off than it is in the store. So the price is very, very good on fragrancex.net. So, and that's for almost any fragrance. I did have to wait list for this particular size. I got the, the backup bottle, I got the 1.7. So, if you see a fragrance and it says notify me when it's back in stock, please do that. They absolutely will notify you. I highly recommend purchasing from them. I would not, if I in any way thought that they were selling knockoffs or fakes, I would never recommend it. I wouldn't want to do that to myself. So I feel very comfortable in recommending them. So that is all I have for this week. And since I have shut the camera off twice now and it shuts off automatically 30 minutes, I think for a short episode, I think this went a lot longer than I thought it would. So having said all that, I hope you all have a wonderful upcoming weekend and a wonderful week. And I hope to see you next week until then, remember to knit with sense.